I'm going to come back. So now, see how I'm putting this X right here on the front? And so this is where this one kind of gets into the groin where you might have to do a little bit of adjustment. Okay, and the thing too is on these, these wraps, I want to be careful because I really don't want to end it up here. If that was the case, I would just rather come back through and kind of end it back down the lake. Okay, so go ahead and set down. Okay. And so it's going to be pulling, so it's going to want to spring kind of with this leg just a little bit. It's acting like a spring. Mm -hmm. So that's pretty much it. But the thing I want to see is I want to see that this is these, this uh, eighth band just straddling the, the hip bone because thing, that's important because if it's down off the edge, you know, I don't want it to slide down off the hip. Sometimes people get too low and then they'll take away from the effectiveness. So I kind of like to have a half meeting here. And then I want to see that X sitting on the front of their, uh, their uh, body. Okay? Does that make sense? Okay. It kind of fills where that greater trochanter bone is at. Your X is going to be kind of there. I don't want to see the X up forward. It might not be directly over the side, but I don't want to see it too far forward. Okay? Same thing. We're going to go across. But now what we're going to do is when we come down across here, you're going to kind of come up on the butt a little bit. So don't be bashful to cover the, the cheek a little bit, okay? So, again, I'm going to come around. I'm going to find the hip bone on the, on the far side. And right here, I'm going to come down. And this one, I'm going to come up on the butt cheek. But be careful you don't get too much down in the groin, it'll be uncomfortable to them, okay? Wait, what's the major difference between the two? The X is on the outside on this one where the hip flexor is on the front. Sorry, do you see that, Greg? I see it. So do you see, basically from right here to here, okay, oh, I told you, I didn't even tell you one step, sorry. The one thing you want to do is you want them to be internally rotated. So step, stagger, stance, and I want you to internally rotate just like that. Sorry. So when you start this off, what I want to see is I want them to be, them just be staggered stance with that injured leg, be internally rotated, okay? Because we just got done saying that internal or external rotation with abduction is what's getting them, okay? Yeah. So the difference is, is, see how my center of my X goes down the side where before the center of the X was more on the front? That's mm -hmm. the difference. One is straight up, foot forward, elevated, X on the front. This one, staggered stance, X or internally rotated, and then the X will be more on the uh, lateral side of the hip. Okay. Use two fingers above where we're going to start. I'm just going to use a four inch. Now, I could get away with the six inch, but I just have to make the spirals a lot tighter. Okay. Okay. So that's all it really is. Boom. So that's easy. Easy money right there, okay? Marcus, he has a pretty dominant one, so it's easy to tell, okay? So what I want to do is I want to go around the bicep, and I want to come across the chest, come back down, similar to like the hip spike and the, um, the adductor, but now my X I'm going to try and put up here on the shoulder. Now, I don't want the X to be too low down here. I want to make sure it's up high within reason, okay? So just have him go in a scarecrow position. Do one or two times around. And another thing, be careful right here across the um, neck. You don't want to try and choke, okay? Another thing you got to be aware of, don't get too far in the armpit and make a big old ball right there, because that will be uncomfortable. Again, try to end it up here if you can. So, I could have ended it. Right there, okay? So, real quick, I'm going to wind it so you guys can kind of see, just relax now. You see kind of how where that X is at? I'm a little bit forward, but I'm trying to keep it up high here. Right there is the AC joint. I want to try and keep this X up as high as I possibly can with the lead it. And not get it so high that it's sitting up here in this throat. Because that would be pretty uncomfortable if it was sitting like this. Okay? <laughs> So just kind of keep it down within reason and come across here. And then you can kind of see how it's bunched up in his armpit. Just imagine if you're having to run with a big old ball right there in your armpit. So would that be comfortable or uncomfortable? So just be kind of reasonable within that, okay? Now I did this, and so this motion 
the way I pulled it, I pulled them internally so it's going to resist that external rotation. I'm not too concerned, but depending on how you do that, for purposes of passing off for the test, you're going to go around you can come across the front. By doing that, that will kind of restrict this motion. But if I went this way and come back here, that would restrict the internal rotation that way. But just for the passing off purposes, um, kind of look at her arm, how everything kind of did. It cones down, right? Okay, you kind of see where the muscle right here, see how it's all, like kind of, it's like just basically like a mass right here. You usually want to try and get down just a little bit below that, okay? And then the other spot is like you got, if she if she was a flexor bicep, you know, peak, and then you have, then you have like, it's gonna, you know, right here. So I like to put anchors right above the biceps so that if it ever had to slide down, it's gonna have to get bigger than the peak, right? Same thing right here, is where I try to do my anchors, okay? So, what I do is, just pre-wrap the arm, and this one right here, it takes, uh, if you get less than two minutes, you can get um, three bonus points, okay? So, what I like to do for this is I like to tell them, go ahead, and I want this one I want to hear on the final, go ahead and flex your bicep. Okay, and I just tape your skin. I don't feel bashful about doing that because, you know, it's keep the sliding, okay? Sorry guys, I'm gonna be real now, but oh well. Okay. And then I want, what I want to do here is I want to kind of angle it up. So I tell her to flex her forearm for me. The reason why you want to do this, because even still this day, I always get things too tight, and then I end up having to make a little V right here in their form because it's too tight <laughs> on tape wise. Okay, I want to get her in a position instead of so if this right here from this position back hurts. And see how hypermobile she is a little bit. Like mm -hmm. you get someone else, Sarah. Let's see you straighten your arm now. See the difference. See how she's a little bit more. Than like Shiloh, so some some people are designed that way. So you just got to find out what works best for her. So I'm gonna because she's a little bit more, I'm just gonna take a little bit more. Okay. So what I want to do is you can do it a couple different ways. You can remember how I showed you guys on the um, the hyperextension of the knee. I can measure this, and I can create an X. So what I want to do is this X right here. I want to center it up from side to side, and then make sure wherever the crease is at is kind of where this X is at. So I can. I can put her in a position where it's going to work out, and if try and keep a natural pull, I might have to rotate this in so that I keep the X kind of right here in the middle, okay? That's just one option, okay? <coughs> do this. And then after that, I go do two and two to finish it up. Typically, um, there's people that do this one, kind of like we did with the... Uh, right here in the middle from side to side and that creates okay now if you need to kind of feather these out a little bit cover a little bit more and try and get these to anchor on the um, anchor spots so then I'm just going to go back through have a flexor bicep sorry it's kind of Be careful that you don't get the tape over the peak of the bicep, okay? Yeah. And the thing is, when you get ready for the finals, I'll tell you a couple of bull cheats so that you can tell your uh, model, okay? So, it's not always the prettiest when you do that, but feel it? Okay, so that's the one way. Now, I'm just going to show you what if I'd have done it this way. I just, you know, created that where it's enough or whatever. and done my two anchors and two anchors. And so that it would have, that makes sense guys? Yeah. So I don't care whether it's this way. It doesn't matter, like I just want a couple extra. Okay, so 
that's how we do that. So that's going to be, because right now I'm setting it up to tape wrist and thumb, okay? And I'll break it up and I'll show you at what point the wrist is, and then I'll show you where it's, the thumb staff, okay? So I'm just going to start on the lateral side here, and I'm going to angle down just a slight, not much, because I want to angle up to come through the hand. So I'm going to go one, two times. This is just my second, now I'm going to go right into the hand, okay? And what I want to do when I get here, see how I pull the stuff off? I don't want to use the hand when I come through the thumb to pull a piece off and then squish my hand down. I just want to pull off. Now what I want to do is I want to tuck this little portion right here in on the thumb so we're not going to create a, a, like a tape cut. Okay? Pulling it off a little bit so you have a little and then come back through, okay? That's going to be a wrist. Pull off a piece big enough, make sure it's... You know, good enough. Now, the, this is the thing I want you guys to pay attention with. We're going to save the injury as the thumbs got pulled back, okay? And it's this joint right here that we're doing, okay? This joint right here is what's sprained, okay? And so I want to try and keep that X on the top of it, okay? So what I want to do, and be careful you don't get the, this pulled too tight around the actual thumb itself so we don't cut the circulation off. So kind of attempt to see where the thumb is at. The first one that I want you to do, because we're going to pretend that this joint, this injury is the joint getting pulled out, so I want to prevent that motion, okay? So I want to take this, and I want to kind of pull this in. That's kind of long, so just, just, just disregard that. And I'll rip it off in just a second. Okay? So I'm creating that X. I'm going to do three of these. You see how I kind of fanned it out across that knuckle? Mm -hmm. Spread it out, because this knuckle is what I'm trying to protect. Okay, the next one I, I want to do, you can do these C-strips. Um, it says apply six ply C-strips using the strips from the hand to anchor, so from the back, the hand to the front, tying in the thumb. So what we're trying to do is we're trying to take this whole joint and shove it in, suck it in tight to the wrist. You can use half a strips if you want, or if you get to the point where you have a full strip, then you can do that. But all you're doing is this, going from the back to the front. Okay, again, make sure you pull from the back to the front. And you can, You're just working your way up this thumb? Yeah, and you can change the angle, like it doesn't always have to be, you know, you can make it happen so it Right here, this one's kind of a high one. What I like to do, if it's like that, just take this and just kind of pinch it right there in the middle. Okay? So now I've just pretty much done the wrist and the thumb. The steps is pulled the jaw, I put it in the tie down, so we're going to repeat what we did for the wrist. Okay? So on the back side, come around. Okay. 